So hi, I'm Sanjay Mujumna. I'm a plastics and hand surgery consultant in Yorkshire. And this is our first in a series on hand injuries, how to manage. And manage means diagnose, uh, investigations, treat the whole shebang, really. So the first thing, this one, we're going to talk about the history taking. So you see a patient in A&E referred to you with a hand injury. The first thing, obviously, it's an injury, it's trauma. Think of ATLS, Advanced Trauma Life Support if it were appropriate and you should be able to ascertain that in the first three or four seconds you know someone had a finger that has been trapped in a door is very different to someone who's been involved in a car accident and also has a concomitant hand injury so atls i'm sure you guys all know about ample that's a-m-p-l-e which is an acronym for allergies medications past medical history last eaten and events leading so a-m-p-l-e um, but for hand injuries, uh, the history part of it, you've got to expand it a bit because it's hugely important. The history part of our hand injuries uh, is diagnostic, it uh, may affect the management and certainly prognostic. So obviously you've got the presenting complaint and that's fine, you need to beef that up a bit. You've got to know about the age of the patient, the occupation of the patient, hobbies the patient may have, pertinent hobbies and handedness of the patient. All of these affect the diagnosis, management, and, and certainly prognosis in terms of hand function. And then the history of presenting company. This is hugely important. And it's the what, when, why, and how, the W's. Yes, the how has a W at the end, okay? Essentially what you're looking at is the mechanism of injury. And rather than be prescriptive and tell you every question that you have to um, look for or answer, let's discuss mechanism of injury. Okay. Now, the exact mechanism of injury is very important. For instance, if somebody has a crush injury, you know, say they had a crush injury, fingertip in a door, very different to, oh, I had my hand trapped in some rollers, doctor. If you, if somebody has a crush injury, you want to know how long it was trapped for, you know, which part of the hand was trapped whether there's muscle in the part of the hand that was trapped, was it were, if there were rollers, were they hot, how much of a space between the rollers, were the rollers still spinning, you know, how did they um, extract the um, hand from the rollers, because if you extract and pull it out, as opposed to separate rollers and take it out, it's two different things, because in the first instance, you may have an avulsion injury, as well as a crush injury. Crush injuries always think of compartment syndrome. If there's increasing pain, obviously starting with compartment syndrome. And that's where his muscle involved comes in. If a, there's a tool injury, is it a power tool versus a, a non-power tool? For instance, if somebody is using a handheld saw that is a non-power uh, saw, the level of injury is far different if somebody is using a circular saw. And if somebody is using a tool, you've got to work, work out, you know, if it's a saw, what is the size of the blades, what is the, um, you know, what is the size of the teeth, what is the spacing of the teeth. And all these things will give you an idea of the, the, the severity of the injury, which may not be necessarily obvious initially when you see the patient. History is very important. Is there contamination of the injuring object? Uh, or the immediate environment. So you could have someone who cut their uh, hand with a Stanley knife, which was a clean Stanley knife, but they may have been working in a dirty environment, or in fact the Stanley knife could have been dirty, and they may have been working in a clean environment. Either of those give you a situation, high risk of uh, infection. It is an animal bite. You know, you want to know what kind of animal. Okay, not the breed of dog necessarily, but you want to know if it's a dog versus a cat because that may determine what sort of antibiotics you may need to give the patient because cat bites have a lot more pastorella that um, goes into the wound versus dog bites where they do have pastorella but they have more staphylococcus aureus. So these things are quite important. Dog bites tend to be tearing injuries and leave gaps as opposed to cats who have sharper, pointier teeth and the teeth can go further in. So if you've got a dog bite on a finger, less likely you get a flexor sheath injury than a cat bite because the, the uh, cat teeth are like um, needles. They go into the flexor sheath, the, the overlying tissue then closes up and you can get a um, uh, flexor sheath infection from a cat bite very soon. I had a patient who had a flexor sheath infection from a cat bite within eight hours of the injury. 
The other thing you've got to realize that patients may be economical with the truth, at least, less than totally honest, if you would. If someone's punched a wall, they may have a fracture, but if someone's punched someone, another person in their mouth, they may have a fracture, but they might also have a tooth injury, higher risk of infection. Is there a high pressure injury? And if there's a high pressure injury, what liquid was under pressure? How much was the pressure? So all of these things are all history of presenting complaint. As I said, one can't be prescriptive about the question, but you need to be a bit of a detective and work out the history of presenting complaint. Is there a self-harm issue? Because that may bring up a whole um, can of worms that is open in terms of psychological intervention and so on. Was first aid given? And that's very important, especially in things like burns. If somebody got a, a burn to their hand, for instance, and if they put their hand under uh, lukewarm or cold running water, that will reduce the depth of the burn than if they didn't. Or if there's a chemical burn, you know, what, what was the first aid given and, and, and anything else. Are there any other injuries? Remember that a person with a hand injury may have other injuries. ATL is principal. You've got to ensure that there aren't any other injuries, but the history will give you guidance as to what else to look for. Someone being assaulted versus someone had a, a injury at home, two different cups of tea. Okay. Now, the other thing is, are there any previous injuries of a similar nature? So you've got someone who's broken their hand before because they've punched a wall upon someone or they've had a flexor tendon injury before from being at work. Then when you examine them, you will have two different sort of scenarios, two people who've never done it before. So you could have someone with a flexor tendon injury and they can't move the finger, but then they said, Doc, I've had this injury 20 years ago, same thing, and I couldn't move the finger then either different um, cup of tea and surgery have they had surgery to that limb and that will give you an idea as to what may have happened before and which leads on to function of the hand previous to the current injury always inquire did your hand move normally prior to this injury could you do these movements could you have sensation in your hand and that will give you a global picture of the hand prior to the the the, um, the current injury a pre-morbid state of the hand if you would so that's history of presenting complaint. And then you go on to past medical history, terribly important generally, but specifically things like do they have diabetes, so they have high risk of infection, do they have sickle cell, that's important. A lot of hand injuries um, that re may require an operation would require tourniquet if someone's got sickle cell, tourniquet, sickle cell crisis. So past medical history, fairly detailed, quite important. Past surgical history is also important, including pregnancy and pregnancy is not surgical as much as medical or gynecological if you would but the pregnancy is terribly important in terms of uh, if they're going for surgery local versus general anesthetic if they're going to have x-rays that sort of thing okay the drug history is important and specific drugs such as warfarin to increase the risk of bleeding is terribly important do they smoke that might be important in terms of fl um, local flaps or so that may be contemplated in the, um, the management of the patient are they allergic to anything? Obviously, any illicit drugs. A lot of patients who get hand injuries um, are young uh, people and there may be a history of illicit drugs. And finally, when did they last eat or drink anything? And that's important if you're going to take them to theatre because you would want to have that six hour gap before they take the theatre if they're having a general anaesthetic or a block. So that's a little overview on the history taking for patients with hand injuries. As I said, not meant to be prescriptive, but more to give you an idea that you need to be the detective and get as much history as possible before you then go on to the examination, which is our next video, which we'll be uploading very soon. Thank you very much.